on our agenda. Okay, so we okay. now have a quorum uh, at 7.02. And I asked, uh, are there any uh, additions to the agenda? I know I need to add uh, pay bills. There's a, a website and some ads for Times Argus. So I'll be adding, I'd like to add that. And I would put the discussion of the Department of Public Safety Dispatch Funds under other business so that we'll do it after the public hearing. That's, if everyone's agreed, agreeable to that. Mm -hmm. Any you're, other? You're splitting the, the meeting on both sides of the public hearing? Well, we, yes, we have other business after the public hearing. The yeah. public hearing deal, deals specifically with our three-year right. budget. Oh, that public hearing. Oh, I'm yes. sorry. I, I, I was thinking of the grievance. Not public comment, public hearing. Yeah, but isn't there a hearing also on a, on a complaint? Uh, not not that I it. know of right now. Okay, good, good. No, I don't want to bring it up. No. <laughs> I, thought, I thought there was one every week, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that could come up under other business, but right now, not that I know of. Okay, with those two modifications, agenda will be approved by unanimous consent. Uh, public comments. I know we have one user by phone. Uh, Stephen, is that you? Muted. Yeah, well, I muted him. Okay. It probably is. It's, um, okay, so we're going to go around and, and everybody, please say your name and the town you're from, since this board is meeting remotely. So I'm Donna B. Every time I unmute myself, you mute me. So I'm I'm pretty frustrated. Every you, you know, we're playing a game. Either leave my no, controls no, alone. No, no, Stephen. Stephen, it's just that people, particularly people with earphones, complain about the the squelch from your phone. So unless you're speaking, we ask everybody to mute themselves. So if you would identify yourself when you get your chance after the board identifies themselves, that would be great. Thank you. So Donna Bate, I live in Montpelier. I'm a board member. Mel? Mel, John Bell, Barry, and I'm a board member. Steve, uh, Jim? Ward, Barry, uh, City of Barry, pointed rep. Uh, Kim? Kim Cheney, Montpelier, at large member. Uh, Doug? Doug Hoyt, uh, City of Montpelier representative, board member, Term limited until March. Okay. And we, we do have uh, other people uh, present. And so when you speak, if you would identify yourself, that would be helpful. Any public Steve comments? Whitaker, right? Stephen? Steve Whitaker. I'm a B-O-R-E-D member. Is this the public comment period? Uh, Yes. Right. Well, we still have other people to identify. Chief falls with. Okay. We only really have to identify all the board members that are participating, except unless you speak. Okay. Uh, okay. But we do have some guests, so let's just do that, Jim. That's great. Uh, Jake, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Jake Kimrick, Mayor of Barry City. Yes, thank you for being here. Deputy Chief Joe, <laughs> I'm supposed to use your last name now, you're official, huh? Uh, good evening, my, uh, my name's Joe Walsworth. I'm the intern chief for the Bear City Fire Department. Thank you, Carrie. Good evening, Carrie McCool, dispatch supervisor in Montpelier Police. Thank you for being here, uh, David. I don't know if he's listening live or recording. Uh, and then we have Orca and Stephen. You want to introduce Steve yourself? Montpelier. Thank you. Did you? All right. So public comment. Stephen, do you have any public comment? Well, is this? I get another chance when you open the public hearing, right? Public hearing is specifically about the budget. This is public comments about things that are not on the agenda. Well, you've in what have you added to the agenda? You've added the the, the state grants. 
we added the pay the bills and talk about the dispatch funds. Well, I want to talk about the governance issue because that's why that that relates to the uh, state grants, but no. there was some dispute about that last night. So if, so if you if want to talk about, I'm sorry, Stephen, if you want to talk about the public safety dispatch funds, then would you save that when it gets in the agenda later under other business? It's not anything? related to public safety dispatch funds. It's related to governance in the region. I'm sorry, I thought no, you I mean, were bringing it up through the dispatch discussion with the Department of Public Safety. No, I'm saying that this, okay. The, the, okay, I, I just want to put on the record that uh, your manner of r railroading the conversation and muting me uh, almost every chance you get uh, really discourages public comment. Okay, so noted. Any any other public comment from anyone else? Okay, the minutes of October 13th are here for approval. I'm open for a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. <clears throat> Second. I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the October 13th board meeting. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Good. Thank you. Now, I've distributed a draft uh, for a three year budget. Oh, let's do the bills. Bills, sorry. Bills first uh, before we get involved in the budget discussion. So there are two, two, individu two individual companies that I've had to pay bills for on my credit card. One is the Times Argus for the ads. Two uh, ads, there were a succession of several ads for the public hearing and likewise for the annual meeting. Each are 72.15. For the public hearing, 7215 was the cost for the annual meeting. The other bills were from Eternity Web. It happens every time at uh, this time of year. There, it was an increase of $100. Uh, it's a total of $1,300. That's the website, the domain, the security, and uh, some monetary, some, some assistance, not full supportive staff, but some assistance. I entertain a motion to accept paying those bills or reimbursing me for paying those bills would be more accurate. So move. I move that we reimburse the chair for expenditures that she did on the, our behalf on her credit card. Second. I'm gonna, you second. Are you both comfortable? I prefer to put them in specifically $1,300 for Eternity Web and $144.30 for the Times Argus both being reimbursed to me. And each of these invoices, which I've already sent to Justin, unfortunately, who's ill and not here, will be attached to the warrant. So you'll see the invoices when you sign them, whether that's electronically or in person. Okay, uh -huh. a motion and a second to pay uh -huh. these, these two bills. Yes, Kim? The bill I have is for 1250. Yes. Uh -huh. There's a second one that I sent that's for uh, just the $50 for the domain name oh, okay. that I paid in August. All right, I didn't see that bill. Go ahead. But they'll, again, yeah, okay. Any further discussion on the bills? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Passes, thank you. Now we can talk about the three-year budget. So I may, uh, I went away from the last meeting in October with the, the instructions to add enough money to pay an executive director or someone in a position that wasn't an employee, but would uh, help add, promote public safety authorities mission and 
jobs that they're wanting to do this coming year. And we had paid Paco, we started with Paco at 60. So this was several years later, I started at 70, but you know, you all can decide a different number. Uh, just what the, uh, it depends on what the level of staffing, if you really want an executive director or an administrative assistant. <laughs> but that's what I put in. I also sent it as an Excel sheet so you could change it. Uh, and I put money in the first year of FY24 so that you'd have consulting money to help form what you wanted to do with the, with the CAD, the computer aided dispatch system, because you can't just go forth, you've got to have someone to help you decide exactly what you need and then go after the funding. So any questions about those? I also sent you an email sort of explaining some of those numbers. Anybody want to talk about the budget? I do. Okay, Kim. I understand from last night's council meeting that um, there will be a meeting with Councils of both Barry and Montpelier to discuss our budget. Yes, um, that usually happens uh, because we usually ask for their support when we put something on the ballot. And those dates are uh, December 13th and December 14th. It's going to be shared later, but we can talk about that now. Well, my point was Usually we have some preliminary discussion of the council before we propose a budget. And this yeah. year, that's not the way it's come down. So it seems to me that this is a pro forma budget and we should um, be prepared to listen to the council. The two councils are coming back to back and then make whatever changes we think are advisable. I think the, uh, I watched the, re the YouTube of last night's uh, Montpelier hearing, and there's a great deal of confusion about what's going on with CVPSA and in the city, and we have, some time to try to clear that up. So I think we could have a more productive budget discussion. Okay, um, it, it definitely has been the board's decision to, to do it the way we've done it. Uh, and we have to have it within our charter. We, we need to have our preliminary budget now, but again, it's just a preliminary budget. Yeah, and then no, we I... do have the discussions with the city. We have discussions from the public. And we have until we have to submit it to the cities in January to make a final decision. I agree. I, I think it's. But, but meanwhile, can we talk about the budget? I'm really yeah, here to. I, I don't have a problem with the budget. I think it was uh, a pro forma proposal and with further discussion uh, with the councils and so forth that may change. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Doug, is your hand up? No. Uh, Joe, you might have some in, in, information about, I used the number, which is what I told the board when they mentioned putting the CAD in. I used the number that was in Televate. It's, no, it's not like an end all number. If it's way out of whack, uh, please, you know, tell us. Um, Joe Alger at Barry City Fire. Um, so I don't have the specific numbers. I know that Chief Pete has uh, been in contact with uh, Hartford. Uh, I think that the numbers that he has is considerably less than that, but I'm not prepared to speak to that at this point in time. So I do know that uh, he has, has uh, let uh, Manager Frazier know this. Mm -hmm. And so I, without being misquoted, I'm going to leave that to Chief Pete too. So if you want to reach out to him, Donna, I would do that. Okay, I mean, I guess I'd rather have a high number and, and, and reduce it when we get out. And again, it's a FY25 number, it's way out there, uh, than to have too little. Uh, Jim, Mel, any comments? 
<clears throat> just a clarification, because what I'm looking at here, I thought was the latest budget. Um, I, I don't see a CAD system on it. So am I looking at? Okay. Uh, actually, the line item is equipment, and it's FY25. It's $750,000. Oh, okay. All right. That's fine. I was looking for CAD. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I, I just looked... couldn't put CAD in the budget, but I did, I did explain in the follow-up email that the CAD system I, I had looked at equipment and saw thirty nine hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. I said, "Well, that can't be it." But it jumps up to seven hundred and fifty. That's yeah. The thirty nine is what we give to Barry Police Far this year. Yeah, yeah. So I have a question, Mel, from Barry City. Um, yes. Just for clarification, part of the reason we've written this grant, or the grant was written. Um, is to cover part or, part or all of that 750, right? No, the CAD is not in the equipment acquisition because it's okay. so expensive. And it was taken out even when they when the application was at 3.5, it didn't have a CAD in it. But it is one of the things of which through the need assessment was recommended to have. We know that it's a good piece of equipment to have because of the way it interfaces everything for the dispatchers and for the first responders, and as well as collecting data more appropriately, but it's very expensive. Yeah. I just, I, you know, just from a budget, a city budget standpoint, it's gonna, it's all gonna be a hard sell. Well, I don't think it would happen unless a big grant happened. Okay. I mean, that's why I have the, the income under grant. When you look at the income, I don't have it coming from the cities. I have it coming from a grant. That's my assumption. Okay. Is that you would go out, whether that's an earmark, whatever, but you wouldn't do it without major capital grant somewhere. All righty. But it's not in the current grant proposal, is what you're saying. No, it's not. Okay. And, and um, I guess just so, I'm really surprised. I don't feel that public safety authority is at a place that is worth putting money in an executive director. I, I was told last night at city council, but haven't found the legal reference that you cannot have an executive director that is not an employee. They cannot be a, a vendor, somebody you hire as a consultant. They can be staff, they can be a project manager, but they can't be an executive director. So I don't support this budget. I don't feel it's a good use of money, which is why I've been willing to struggle and, and pitch in a lot the last four years without an executive director, because it, I just don't see the organization being worthwhile to have an executive director. I see right now until this current grant gets in place and empowers then us to grow on that, that it would not be a good use of money. That's just where I'm at. Kim, you have your hand up. Yes, yeah, so I want to go back to the CAD for a moment. Um, I had a discussion with Chief Locke, who's running the Chittenden Public Safety Authority. And uh, at the meeting of the Joint Fiscal Committee, Commissioner Morrison reported on dispatching, um, and I'm going to start with Morrison first and come back to Locke, Locke but in one of the PSAPs they have a 48% vacancy rate, and the reason they can't keep anybody is because they're overwhelmed by the complexity of the dispatching operation. That they're dispatching so many people, and it's unbelievably difficult to keep track of everybody, and people just quit. And what Chief Locke told me, Burlington, I use loosely, it's Chittenden County, really. He regards a CAD system as absolutely essential to keep employees, I don't know, he has 15 agencies or somebody that he dispatches for. And he says, without a CAD system, there's no way it would work. You won't be able to keep people. Um, 
and I think Kerry McCool may have something to say about this, but I, I think our local dispatching is pretty complicated given the antiquity of our system. Um, but if in fact we take on new people, and as I understand the consoles would allow us to dispatch throughout the state effectively, not just in our local region. Um, we would need to be prepared to have a CAD system as far as I can see in order to attract people to work for us. So oh, and what uh, Chief Locke told me is he got a system for, I don't know, something like $60,000, 70, because there was competitive bidding and people wanted to break into Vermont. I asked him about the 750 number. He said, well, I don't think it's unrealistic. So it isn't just a good to have thing. I think if we're really going to have a dispatch and infrastructure system to serve people, we might not need it in 25, but we may need it thereafter. And I, I agree with Donna that I think uh, there may be some grants, but it's it's going to be a zoo next year, I can tell you that, because there, there just isn't enough money for a regional system with what we have now. So I would leave it in the budget as pro forma. I think we should discuss with the city councils why it's important, more importantly, what it is, because I have that and few of them know, and then why it's important. So that's, I know you wanted to go on to other aspects of the budget, but um, I think it's useful to have a little discussion about the CAD. Well, the CAD's part of the budget, that's fine. Okay, uh, Brian, I see your hand up. Yes, ma'am, I apologize. Is it, is it appropriate for me to make any comments on this one or-, or Sure, is, is sure. Well, yes, I, sir. Well, I'm just wondering, why is that, why, why were we not talked to about that, I mean, it, it, you, know, it, you know, we just mentioned Kerry McCool, but I don't, I don't know how many people, if CVPSA really took a formal discussion with her or with Barry City and talking about the CAD system, but we're throwing something in there. There's some, there's some, there's some things about the CAD system as well. Now, right now the state police is paying for Valcor. Valcor is developing, is working on developing a CAD system. So, if the entire state of Vermont is on Valcor, you know, it's one of those different types of things. Do you, is it appropriate to budget for a CAS system when we may not be at that decision point as to whether it's a system that is going to A, work, or B, that there's, there's, a, there's a lot of moving points going there. So I, it, it, to me, it, it was seen A, we, we were never consulted with, and B, um, it might be too premature right now. There, there are other opportunities, there's other, ways of funding mechanisms to get a CAD system without, you know, one of the things I looked at for was a grant for a Spillman system uh, through DHS. So just to make sure that we have our, our bases covered, but I, I'm not sure if this is something that should be should be budgeted for by CVPSA because it's, we weren't even consulted as part of this. Okay, uh, Brian, I'll just, just my perspective of what, how this works within our three-year budget is that we did a need assessment. And during that need assessment, the one thing that people wanted that we heard from our public safety personnel that was not continued into the DPS grant was the CAD system or something looking like it. So to start putting that in our far out budget of FY25 means we have a vision that we would want our public safety people to have this kind of updated equipment and that we're putting our communities on notice that, gee, let's go this direction. Let's keep supporting our public safety authority, public safety personnel 
with constantly looking at new technology. The technology has gotten, it's so old and it's been so neglected. We don't want to do that again. We want to keep, we want to keep advancing. So we're looking forward to the Department of Public Safety giving the area that 2.4 or more million dollars to get update equipment, but we don't want to stop there. So in that way, that's what we're doing now was we're gathering comments. Well, well yes, ma'am, but but I, I, I don't recall necessarily being formally consulted on it. So I don't know if, you know, I, it, while I do respect, you know, like reaching out to the dispatchers and everything, but I, I'm kind of the head of the organization. And the other part of it is a, a CAD system, when I priced it out for the DHS brand I put in for, was nowhere near $700,000. Great. It was half that Great. price. Great. Again, when when we did the need assessment and all this public safety personnel was involved, Barry, Montpelier, Capital West, as well as the consultants, that was one of many pieces as long with simulcast that was listed. And that's the price we have in our need assessment. So we just, that's what we used. If it's wrong, that's I can... fine. Give us another well, number. No, no, I totally understand, man. But is there a way we can find out who was consulted with from Montpelier and when? This came up in the October meeting and we brought it up in our discussion that we wanted to move forward with equipment that we were told was, was something people wanted. I, so, I, I don't want to belabor it, but my, my dispatch is telling me we, we've never been, they've never been talked to. So, um, okay. I, 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 okay. No, I, I'm sure there were, I mean, I, I'm, I, the people who brought it up, I'm sure it didn't go to you today, yesterday, or last month. It was on our schedule within our need assessment of equipment to look towards. Don, I want to, Steve Whitaker, I want to comment. Uh, just a moment. There's two board members with hands up. So um, I think Doug might have beat Jim. Doug, your hand is up. And then Jim. Hi, Brian. How you doing? Good, sir. Yourself? Not too bad for an old guy. Say, um, I'm not, please don't take this as being sarcastic. Suggesting that the board did not reach out to anybody about the concept of records or CAD, you could turn that around and say that the board didn't hear anything directly necessarily from you or anybody else in the organization. But members of the board did hear from other people that are participating in this grant process. And that was one of the items that came up. Now, having been involved in records management in so-called CAD, I need to be very clear that that concept encompasses a large number of things. Uh, some of these so-called CADs are nothing more than glorified records management systems. Need to be clear that we're getting something that will assist to find people like Carrie and the people that she works with in guiding various people to situations in which there needs to be um, emergency, emergency services provided. So I don't think we're trying to step on anybody's toes. I don't think we're trying to take away any from anybody. We just want to respond to what we hear that is needed. And 750 could be way over the top. And it needs to be something that we work to determine what it is and what's going on. Now, obviously, if you don't want any assistance, by all means, speak up. It won't hurt my feelings. We'll take it off the budget. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go into Jim, Doug, if you're done. Yeah, I'm done. Let me okay. lower it. Uh, uh, Jim, you had your hand up next. Yeah, I was pretty much going to say, uh, or at least partly what Doug just said, um, there's a significant difference between a record management system, which Velcro was, and a 
the CAD system, particularly in the fire service. Um, but the point that I wanted to make to, to the chief was that I haven't been on this board more than, I think, year and a half now, but I've been involved in it intermittently for since the beginning, five, five years ago, whatever it was. And the CAD system was discussed from the beginning that that was essential uh, and went part and parcel with changing the hardware in, in the uh, console. So it, it, it's, it has been talked about considerably. Uh, the chief may be right that no one was recently consulted on it. But at this point, we're talking about the concept of having a CAD system uh, as opposed to not having one. There's multiple different brands out there and the different components. There's, it's gonna be a, a project in itself getting everyone on the same page of what the system needs. But just the idea of having one is kind of as essential as having a microphone. Um, from my perspective, I've been kind of harping from the beginning that the fire dispatching needs to um, get more involved in the, the management of, the, of incidents from a fire perspective. And I'm consistently being told, well, when we get the CAD system, that's gonna, that's gonna help the dispatchers. I don't disagree with that. It's going to come up and tell them you got to do a 15 minute um, lapse time announcement and so forth. But I want to just emphasize that a CAD system or any computer system doesn't replace skilled dispatch and, and having to learn, um, you know, the protocols for the police side and the fire side are, are equally, if not more important than following a computer prompt. So, Anyway, the CAD system is, is a, a key part to moving forward with the uh, modernization of the communications dispatch. Donna, Donna, could you kill that? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, unfortunately, I don't hear that that static. Uh, Stephen, Jim, if you're done, it's Stephen's turn. And Stephen, when you get done talking, please mute yourself. That's fine. I don't mind meeting myself. Uh, Do it. I prefer it. Is my turn now? Yes, sir. So, Steve Whitaker, Montpelier. I think that this discussion is absolutely upside down. Without having a definition of the role that CVPSA is playing, it's totally inappropriate for CVPSA to try to be the piggy bank for a dispatch center which we don't own or govern. And if Montpelier Police, you know, changes their model and becomes a regional facility governed by the served towns, then it might be appropriate for the served towns governing board to be insisting on a CAD system and paying for it. But to just be using CVPSA as a piggy bank to, to write to pay Televate to write a grant for Montpelier is is wholly inappropriate. But without defining what role CVPA say is going to have in planning, in training, in implementation of a radio system, we're just flopping around. It's nonsense. You know, uh, there's a five million dollar contract between the Department of Public Safety and Crosswinds, the developer of Valcor to create a CAD system. I'm very skeptical that it'll ever happen. And there are dispatchers walking out the door who were trained and familiar with Spillman. And it's an insult to their talent uh, and their workload and their stress to ask them to work with Valcor pretending to be a CAD system. So yes, a CAD system is necessary. I'm glad that Brian Pete is looking at Spillman uh, because you would need something like Spillman to attract dispatchers to fill all these seats of an increased workload. But that's not our fight to fight. You know, that's that's really uh, an example of how misguided and how lacking a direction and how lacking a focus. You can't really put a budget together until you put a work plan together. And I'm annoyed or or insulted 
that we can be so diligent about the charter requiring a notice to get reimbursed for an advertisement when the charter requires a public safety director and you're more than willing to throw the public safety director off overboard. So an organization without a staff, a leader who knows how to serve the needs of public safety and bring the parties together is, is, is flapping in the breeze. Okay, thank you. Please mute. Uh, I had another hand go up. I don't see it now. Uh, Joe, your hand was up at one point. Do you want to speak? Chief Allsworth? Uh, Ma Madam Chair, it, that's the back feed that we can hear over here, and it's really, it drowns out the other speakers. Okay, he's muted now. Are you hearing it? Nope, it's done. Thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Do you have any comments you want to make, Joe? Uh, the only thing that I just want to echo, Chief Pete, uh, I think that uh, any movement towards uh, the CAD really needs to be uh, in concert with the chiefs and you really need to solicit uh, both uh, public safety chiefs and both communities uh, input, please. So that's the only thing I have. Okay. All right, uh, Jim Ward. Yeah, just just quickly, I, I find myself in the unique position of, of agreeing with Stephen Whitaker. Um, but what I was relating to or, or relating to, referring to earlier was, um, I, I am very confused of what our role is in this whole scheme of things. The, the, the budget, the grant, um, the, the grant is all in the city of Montpelier's um, name i'm not sure what our role is but that being said i think a cad system is essential and if we can be the vehicle to make that happen i'm in favor of trying to pursue that to, to whatever extent that that uh, we we can but it is still very confusing what is our role we don't own the radio system we don't have the grant coming to us we don't have any authority over the dis disbursement of funds um but if we can be the idea generator, that's better than nothing. And, and that's still needed. Yes, yes, thank you, Jim. I think that training and equipment is something we have been able to do and bringing people together to talk more. Uh, so, all right. Uh, uh, anyone else who hasn't spoke on the budget? All right, Kim, your hands back up. Uh, Kim, we can't hear you. You're still muted. And then I got Mel. I agree with Steve and, and uh, Jim. The next this agenda item is updated on the DPS application. But I'm going to want to know what planning has been done by the city in uh, governance because somebody needs to do governance. There was some mention last night, um, the CVPSA charter is a governance formula. I think there are amendments that should be made to it and I've sent them all around to you, but it's true. Unless we know who's actually gonna get this grant and what the governance process is, the budget is somewhat irrelevant. And I think what we're trying to do, at least at the October meeting, was say, look, if we actually get two and a half million and we get a process for raising the next million or so that it'll take to build a system, um, then we need a work plan and we need to know who's going to own it, who's going to maintain it, and how to allocate those expenses. And I think that's really the next agenda item. Okay, we're now in the budget. Mel, you want to talk about the budget? Please, your turn. Well, I guess at this point, I'm kind of confused because it has seemed 
for the small amount of time I've been on this with this group that this is something that we had, I don't know, not permission, but we had been charged to be looking at this and charged to make it happen. And that the Televate study was part of that. And I know since I've been on council, people have been talking about the CAD system. However, when I hear that we really, what was your thing, Stephen? Flopping in the breeze or something like that, that, that we don't have any control over it or any whatever. I, then I wonder why we have an executive director put in there, et cetera. And I mean, at the end of the day, I think that we're kind of staring reality in the face that the world is just moving forward technologically and we can either join it or not. And it might behoove us to join it. So from that standpoint, I, I support this, but I'm, I'm just trying to understand where, if we are being premature, because I'm hearing so much hedging from people who've been working on this now, I'm getting a little nervous. That's understatement. Okay. Donna, I've got another comment. All right, go ahead, Stephen. So the, the issue with writing a work plan and, and governing a multi-town dispatch authority uh, has to do with who's going to put the technology plan together. It, it took two years of my efforts to finally get the needs assessment voted by the board. You know, it, everyone pushed back. We don't need the needs assessment. We know what we're doing. We, we want just the simulcast system. The simulcast system, that idea is already obsolete. We need a trunk radio system, which means going back to the radio design phase. And I would encourage, and despite Brian Pete's ignorance about LTE, that we need to design cellular broadband into the dead zones wherever we're putting radio coverage for uh, for public safety LMR. And that what we have is a fractionated turf war going on between a non-organization called Capital Fire that but, happened to own the system from 30 years ago. Uh, Stephen, and, Stephen, I'm sorry. And, you're, no, you're off. I, I feel you're off topic. Uh, we. No, I'm, off, I'm on topic because the budget has to have funding to implement a work plan, and the work plan has to be defined as to what Capital Fire is going to do, not going to do, or pretend to do, and what CDPSA is going to be established to do or uh, authorized to do by the member towns. I'm, and I'm we, sorry that those those areas are really outside of this specific budget. Like the trunk system was, dis was discussed within the needs assessment, and the area decided not to do that. They went with the simulcast. So the discussion now is dealing with the budgets, which have an executive director in it and has money for some type of a computer aided dispatch system. But you also need a design of a radio system that incorporates cellular broadband. And you also need an executive director project manager a, for that. That's a lot of equipment dis discussion that we've it's had before and we'll have again. And by the way, uh, CAD system is not equipment. It's a piece of software that rides on the, the regular computers at the desks. Exactly right. Huh. Yes, it's a system. It's a computer-aided dispatch system. I'm, I call it equipment because you pay through the same sort of grants for software, hardware. All right. Uh, anyone else on the board? Steve, please mute yourself. If you don't, then I will. Okay. So what is the board's pleasure? To keep the numbers that are in the budget with an executive director unhoused and a 
future of some major equipment to help acute computer aided dispatch system. Uh, Joe, I see your hand, but I was asking the board to take a lead. Uh, Doug Hoyt. I would like to suggest that the uh, Public Safety Authority sit down with Brian Peet and uh, I guess Joe Allsworth and get some sort of understanding of what kind of assistant they, assistance they would like to see from Public Safety Authority with regard to CAT. And uh, we should take our lead from them in terms of what it is they want, they need, and how can we best assist them. Or maybe not. Oh. We thought we did that within the need assessment. <laughs> but yes, okay. But meanwhile, we have a budget that the draft budget that needs to be presented at our public hearing when it opens in the later portion of this meeting that then I'm, will ultimately lead to a, more discussion. I'm so, okay with leaving that particular line item in, but I think we need to take care of the... Right, so... So am I asking of whether the board wanted to keep this budget isn't excluding meeting with any personnel, anybody, any discussion on modifying it for the next portion of the draft. But for tonight, as far as the budget that goes into the public hearing as our draft budget for the three-year budget that we're required to do, I'm asking the board, are there any modifications? We've talked about it. Is there any number modifications? Uh, Mel, your hand's up. Yeah, I do have a question about when you started, when we started the meeting, you made the comment that you wouldn't support the budget. Is nope. that because of, nope, that I heard that wrong or nope, that you won't support it? No, I don't support it. I, okay. I don't feel we should be putting money out into an executive director. Okay. And can this be done without an executive director? I, I feel that we should do what we did before as project managers, that when we are defined like we've, we wanted the need assessment, despite what Stephen said, I disagree. We've wanted a need assessment way, way back, 2016, 2018. And we had some push and pull with some public safety staff individuals who thought they could do it within, you know, the two cities, but we eventually hard. And we did that need assessment. And I feel we need to keep moving because the one thing we can do since the cities are not succeeding any authorizing operating powers to us is we can do training and we can do equipment. And that we can do that in a lead way that helps our budget items not compete with other city budget items. So I think that's, a, it's not the biggest role, but it's an important role. And it's one we've done well in the past. So I feel like using our own need assessment and going to that and saying, what's the next equipment level that we can go after? That's how I would approach it. And if you do hire a project director, who's paying for that? Does that need to go into this budget? Well, I mean, you, you can't pay for anything unless you have it on the ballot and you can't have it on the ballot unless you have I, it in your I, budget. Right. I understand yeah. that. But if you so, take a second. I'm sorry, Mel, you, at least on my computer, you, you freezing. cut off. So uh, maybe you want to try that again. I said, if you take the executive director out and substitute in a project manager do you have you who's going to pay for the project manager we are we have to put that in our budget anything in our budget has to be funded through a ballot item of the two cities i so no, i get that part so we're going to have to put something in is what i'm yes hearing. yes but I feel it can be very specific. And instead of a broad person as an executive director, you can decide, come together, do a real solicitation 
an update with all the public safety personnel and the cities and say, okay, as our members, how's the, what's the best next level of equipment? If it's not the CAD, what is it? And then let's hire a project person to help us investigate that and move forward to find funding for it. And in this budget, I have 30, I put 35,000 in as a consultant. That project manager to me was going to be diving into whether it was the CAD or what else was next for the FY25 budget. Okay. So I would take out the executive director and the staff expenses and the staff liability insurance. It's about $7,500 from the budget. Okay. For FY24. All right. All right. Um, I think that answers my question for this moment. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Kim. I'd like to ask uh, Brian Pete if he's still available and Joe Waldsworth, if they're willing to meet with this board or some designate, I think the whole board or those who want to attend to have a thorough discussion of the interaction between the two, uh, the cities and us. I don't see how we can proceed rationally without that discussion. Well, we, we're, we have to proceed without that discussion as far as we need to leave tonight with a budget that we presented at our public hearing. No, I, I understand. And that. so, of course, That's we can. I'm supporting them. The budget. They, they, they and the cities have invited us to come and, and do that. So it's just a matter of making those appointments. So, is there anything within the budget? Anybody want to make a motion on the budget? I'll move it be approved. As okay. Written. As as was sent out. Yes. The hundred and twenty thousand FY twenty four, eight hundred and seventy five thousand FY twenty five. Yes, okay. I make that motion with the understanding that it'll be reviewed next month. Absolutely. Okay, anyone for a second? No second? Um, you, I'll, uh, I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Uh, among the discussion, Joe's had his hand up. I'm going to let him talk, and then the board can have further discussion about the motion. Uh, Joe? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to point out that uh, the board has a luxury tonight that uh, Rick Burt from Televate is here, that I think if there's pointed questions about the study or uh, the CAD system, that, that you rely on Rick's uh, expertise to answer that. But I also think mm -hmm. that uh, Brian in the chat also mentioned something that's worth discussing too. So I think it's important both using both of those resources um, and it's pertinent to this discussion now. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm too busy uh, tonight to pay attention to the chat and I should have turned it off. Can you tell me what's in the chat? Because I, I really, I'm manning the Zoom as well as taking minutes. So yes. If, if you would recognize Chief Pete, I think he could address that. Well, we tried, but I thought he disappeared. Okay, and then uh, Rick, I'm sorry, I, I barely noticed you were there. <laughs> uh, uh, Chief Pete, do you have comments? Uh, well, yes, ma'am. See, so so that's where my concern came in. It's not necessarily that I'm disputing a CAD system because I have my doubts with Valcor too, and I've been actively looking for other CAD systems. So so there's no argument there. But my 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 concern comes in with the fact again that we haven't been haven't been talked to about this because I would have been able to tell you that significantly even less than three hundred thousand um, dollars. Is, is there's a possibility to, for lack of a better term, tag on to other systems with other, with other agencies for, for fractions of that. And, um, and, and, and so my concern is to, to, to put the taxpayers on the hook for $875,000 when you may only need less than 10,000 for it um, is, is, is just a little, it, it's concerning for me. Okay, but just so you know, it's in the budget. It's in a budget. It wouldn't be on the ballot until, even if it was accepted until March of 24. 
So this is a future item. It's nothing to go in the budget this upcoming March, just so you know that. Okay, Rick, do you want to make a comment? I'm glad to change a number if the board would accept it for the CAD system. Just tell me one. Well, I appreciate the opportunity as always to be here and um, to join you for this. Uh, I'm, I'm, as uh, Joe indicated, I'm happy to be a, a resource to you. Uh, now, Rick, you're really chopping up. I can't hear you. Maybe other how people. How about now? If I get closer, is that any better? It's just a lot of bubbles. I can't understand uh, you. Yes, it's. I can, and, and I'll, let me just, uh, I'll, let me go off mute. I'll go to my phone. I'll be back. I, I'm not going to leave, but I'm going to not speak over this. Uh, my computer. It'll take me a few minutes, so give me a second. Hey, we can hear you right pretty good now. All right, well, let me turn my video off. Maybe my video is taking away all my bandwidth. Um, I, I, I'm just offering to be a, 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 you know, a contribution wherever. I mean, I, I clearly over you know many, many years have been doing this work and 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 we had the CAD, you know, the CAD was a recommendation. It was, uh, um, you know, we, we had to prioritize uh, in order to manage our budget. So certainly a CAD, the fact that you operate, um, you know, you do public safety dispatching and you don't have a CAD is a concern. Um, it's just not the norm, but we work in a number of markets, you know, where they don't have a CAD. So um, it, it Whatever, however, uh, if you do a CAD, you do need to do a requirements gathering audit. What are the so whatever budget we originally came up with was based on, you know, our experience with uh, a variety of different systems because we hadn't defined if it would be a CAD, a CAD and RMS. Uh, didn't have any positions, but we were. I'm sure we were looking at a budget that would would support both um, Barry City and Montpelier. So you would need CAD at both. So we were looking at multiple CADs there or or CAD systems for both of those operations. Um, but that's beside the point. Um, I, I, I'm happy to answer any questions you have about what we've done to date and what other markets are doing and in response to any comments that have been made. Well, I'm, 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 Rick, responses. okay, uh, my core question is, would you substitute a different number than the 750,000 that's in our need assessment? Uh, I, I don't, the only way I can answer that is that um, we'd have to, you know, you would want to do a requirements, a formal requirements gathering, like as the chief has stated, you know, uh, we, we would really need to do a little bit more work for that. I, I'm, I'm not opposed to putting a larger number than a smaller number, but we shouldn't be requesting more money than we need. Um, and, 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 you know, but I, I don't really have any other comment on that. I, I I don't think I'm in a position to say whether or not that number is the right number, wrong number, only based on what we've heard okay. already. Okay, so what, but I understand. I mean, I understand how much work has to be done to just scope out the po potential CAD system. And hence in the 25, 24 budget, there's $35,000 for a consultant to do that. Meanwhile, do we just put $200,000 there, $500,000 there. I mean, what makes people comfortable? I mean, it's just a number for a future budget. I don't mean to, that, that was the number in, in the study. So give me another number. 300,000. 300, okay. Second, to make that change in the budget. Well, may I ask you a question? Are we talking about only for Montpelier or are we talking about for Barry City as well? Both. Yeah. Again, it's how many feet, what features, what vendor, there's so, yeah. there's too many, there's a lot of variables that affect it. Yes, totally understand. It's a very changeable number. Donna, Steve Whitaker here. Uh, just a moment, Steve. We got a attendant of a motion, uh, Doug, a motion to put 300,000 in for the CAD instead of the 75,000. Anyone want to second on that? Sure. I'll, I'll second that. And Kim second it. Okay. Further discussion on the motion by the board. Stephen, mute yourself. Even it's terrible. Wait a minute. Okay. So I had Doug for the motion and Kim for a second. Discussion, Mel? Yeah. Um, so you're proposing to take the 750 and put it down to 300. Yes. Correct. 
And what about the executive director? I heard no motion to change that. Okay. But so you can make one after this motion. Okay, I might do that. Okay. So the motion we have before us is to reduce the amount that we put in the FY25 draft budget from 750,000 to 300,000. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, passes. Uh, Mel, you wanna propose a motion about something else? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make a motion that we um, let go of the executive director. Okay, to remove the executive director and related expenses that are in the budget? That would be good too. Okay. Is there a second to that? I'll second that. Okay, Doug seconds. Uh, further discussion? Yes. Kim? Look, what we don't know is what role CVPSA is going to play in the future. And if the, the key to this whole problem is what we're going to do about governance in order to get any grant money. And I think the city has to decide whether they want our help or not. Um, so I'm budgeting on the assumption that they have made no concrete proposal for a governance proposal. And yet our charter is one. I would recommend some changes to it as I would vote you all to make it. Okay, uh, so uh, am I hearing you, you're saying that the executive director and related expenses need to stay because you feel governance needs work and this person can help with that? Absolutely, and if, okay. not, if there's another okay. governance proposal, we'll do, that's another proposal. All right, anyone else want to make a comment about the motion? Yes, I do. Uh, no, you're not part of the board. Sorry, Steve. Anybody on the board who wants to talk about this motion? Uh, Jim? Yeah, just clarification. You had, At one point, it seemed as though you were had competing uh, ideas of a executive director and project management consulting uh, fees. The consulting and project management fee that's in there uh, is 35,000. So if that's eliminated, if the executive director is completely eliminated, um, what did you have in mind for the project managers or how many that would be, or what was that like one project? I'm, I'm just trying to figure out. The project if gonna... manager, the only reason I put it in there was related to what we were planning for FY25. And so that in FY23, we lay the foundation to move forward to get funds and more information about the CAD system. That's what we put in our budget for 25. So you can add more to that. You can take it away. No, no. What I'm just trying to figure out in my mind is that this board needs to have someone that can take the ball and run with it when, when an idea is being worked on. Um, and that was what Paco did until he left. Um, and, you know, and then we brought Rick in, and that's the consulting side of things. Uh, I'm just wanting to see something in there that that if we did – research a CAD system that there'd be someone that could spearhead that and enough money to, to fund them. That was part that was part of my concern. My other concern is I think we really have to come up with a better definition or, or define in a better way um, what our what our role is. And I don't want to go to the governance end of it. I want to go to, you know, what what are, what are we trying to accomplish? And an executive director can be a, a great administrative person, but if they don't have any subject matter expertise, um, we're all kind of floundering. And, and to, to some extent, there's there's not a lot of 
real subject matter expertise, current subject matter expertise on, on the board itself. So maybe we should be looking, and I would say that this year is just too premature to do it, but at some point in the future, maybe what we need to have is the project manager that's on an executive director, but this is someone that, that has expertise and it's extremely difficult to find someone with expertise in fire and police. It, it you know, it, it ends up being a, a very unusual project to try to, to, to accomplish. But, but anyway, I, I would say I would go along with taking the, the, the executive director out this year. So long as the 35,000, I was just wondering if you had an earmark for something specific. So that's up in the air for what we needed for the 35,000. Right. And you may choose to increase it. I mean, any of these numbers can be changed. And now's the time to just, start I trying just, to do that. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't already earmarked for something. So there is some money in there for, for as needed ad hoc management is what I'm getting at. Yes. And, and, yes. and I really would like to plant the seed of trying to figure out how we can get this authority, this board, Okay. Not necessarily the people, but but the whole idea of the regional approach to it. We, we need some expertise that can that can guide um, where we're going in concert with with the public safety officials that we have right now. Somehow they need to get on the on the board, in my estimation. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anyway, okay. that's a different subject. Okay, Mel, your hand went back up, and then it went back down. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was just tarred. <laughs> Okay, uh, so the motion before us is to remove the executive director and related expenses out of the budget. All in favor say aye. 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 And Kim? I'm opposed. You're opposed. Okay, so we're going to do a roll call. And because we need four votes in order for uh, to be a, a majority, a quorum, then I will have to vote. Uh, Doug, is your hand up for something? No. Okay. So I'm going to do a roll call. Uh, Doug? Uh, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Jim? Yes. Mel? Yes. And Kim? No. And I'll vote yes. All right. So the motion passes. Now, in doing that, do you feel the need to increase the amount under project manager? It's got 35,000 there now. Given some of the things that Jim's talked about, would it be more comfortable to make it 50? Then you could do two things, more than one thing. If not, we'll just leave it. That's fine. Seeing that we, we don't even have anything on the table right now that we want to use it for, um, I, I think 35,000 might be enough. We may find okay. that we cut ourselves short, but we may also end up at the end of the year and still have 35,000 because we couldn't agree on what to hire someone to do. Right. And again, we will do some tweaking of this budget as we meet with people between now and our annual meeting, December 19th, as well as the meetings in January prior to submitting our ballot. Okay. Ballot items to the city. All right. So I'm going to close the discussion of the three-year budget and go into the discussion of the uh, March 2023 town meeting ballot request. And that's just to remind us of what we're asking, we'll be asking the cities to, um, going on their ballot items. So I'm just, I'm just gonna do a, a little huh, mathematical, things here real quick so I can give you a number of what that would be. We're gonna take out seven, five. All right. So that brings us, let's see, we have, Two oh 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 minus seven five four four oh if 
Uh, my little hand calculator is not working. I apologize. I'm getting like one, twelve, four, five, six. I'm I'm gonna maybe somebody else has a better calculator. Mine is just not working. Uh, may I do it by hand? <laughs> maybe that's the way to do it. Are there formula plugged into the spreadsheet? Uh, well, yeah, it, it, it'll probably be, you know, well, the formulas that I have, I don't have that up on my computer. Okay. But at this point, I what I'll do is I'll be leaving this meeting and I'll be before the annual meeting, I'll be sending out a draft item of what the ballots would look like, but we'll make that request that will be minus the 75 some thousand that we're taking out. Okay. Okay. I just, some of these numbers don't look right. So I'm, I'm now challenging whether or not the spreadsheet was added up right, but we'll we remove those items. I'll redistribute the budgets and do the percentages. So you'll know Barry City and Montpelier's allocation 43 and 75 will be applied. Okay. All right. So under the next other business is the Department of Public Safety Dispatch Funds. You were, how many received? I forwarded the report from that Commissioner Morrison presented to the Legislative Joint Committee on Wednesday. Did you all get that? Able to open it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that when you look at that, particularly on the page, which has the five that are funded, page two, and, and you see Montpelier sitting there as in rank number five, but yet put into phase two, you can better understand it when you listen to commissioner talk about that they were really wanting to use this first phase to remove the free agencies from the state peace apps and get them into local dispatching through a regional system. And that they are understaffed and one is just sheer staff shortage, not related to equipment, just personnel shortage that then makes everyone overloaded and working long hours. So she was really clear about that. And in her chart, she says, you know, these are the number of agencies that move. And that unfortunately, even though the city of Montpelier coalition, they have four agents, agencies that would be removed from the PSAP free service into one of these regional dispatch centers. It was, it was too costly. It wouldn't fit in the amount of money that they wanted to spend in the first half. So we were, the Montpelier application is still approved. She's saying it's just not now, it's later. Now she did talk quite a bit and Doug, I know, listened to the presentation and maybe some of you, some others, Kim did. But I, I what I picked up from her personal comments was that there was some discomfort with the equipment being recommended and they felt like they didn't have the expertise within the Department of Public Safety to look at an application that was so equipment driven. And so they asked for some extra money from the state joint committee, which they were granted $260,000 for a project manager and a, some technical assistance to better assess what was listed within the applications. And she said that governance was not an issue, 
that there, there were all these different models and that it really was up to the locals to define the models. So I really disagree with Stephen and Kim on that. Uh, she made clear statements. The governance structure was really about local control and the contract status worked fine in many areas. Other areas had different kind of governance. And so I felt I heard a real comfortability with having contracts with towns uh, to do dispatching. And that the thing that did bother me a little bit was I also heard that she, uh, she had not heard any statewide cry for statewide equity because some of the members of the committee compared this grant system for dis regional dispatch centers like regional schools and there should be equity what's given to each center. And she felt that they were being driven by what people asked for, such as if you look at that chart, Rutland is a very small amount and they couldn't figure out why they would ask for so little. Uh, they're, they're absorbing 32 agencies that now the state does for free and they have a relatively small amount. And she admitted that she didn't really know the content or why, but that's what they asked for. And so she was trusting them. Uh, and like Colchester, ultimately they reduced Colchester and I guess Colchester can decide whether they, so far they've given the nod that'll work for them. But any one of these top five has to implement this within 12 months. And if they can't do that, then whatever amount that has been allotted to them will fall to those below the red line. Those that were placed in the sixth or below priorities. And so that's helpful to know too, that they realize that they're asking these top five to implement everything within 12 months. And if they can't, then they will try to move on so another place can have an opportunity to start forming. Uh, Doug, do you want to make any comments on what you heard from Morrison? Sorry, I caught you when you got you were gone. Oh, no, no, it's, it's perfectly okay. I think you covered it very well. Okay. Uh, Kim, you have your hand up. Yeah, I. I think what the commissioner was saying is she doesn't care what the governance model is, that there has to be one. She didn't backtrack from the RFP requirement that there be contracts with all the towns, not just for dispatching, but who's going to own the system and maintain it and how's How's it going to run? That's that's in the grant. That can be done through a public safety authority. It can be done through the way Chittenden does it with multiple contracts with many towns. And it can be done that way as Shelburne does it with specific contracts with towns for dispatching. And they have sort of an agreement and if something goes wrong in your town with your tower, you fix it, but it's it's pretty vague. And uh, but those all have to be written out, and the grant was approved, conditioned on a governance system being done. And I haven't heard from anybody locally that there is a a governance system that's being offered by either city or well, I have to say, Kim, I've heard more about governance from you than anything the commissioner said. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a matter of how you feel about it. There's nothing she wrote or said that interprets it the same way you do. Well, Donna, we often disagree. Mm -hmm. I don't think she backpedaled from the requirements that there be a uh, 
a governance thing. Our grant condition was approved on a governance thing. And I haven't, I don't know why nobody wants to discuss that. Well, I do know why, because nobody wants to do it. But I think it has to be done. And I'd like to hear from Chief Pete and Joe Aldsworth, if they're still here, what they're thinking about. Uh, as far as the governance model, sir? Yes. Um, I, I, I think that the current model right now is, is, is working itself through, through having project working groups from representatives from all the, uh, um, from the respective uh, primary stakeholders um, through uh, Cap Fire, through Barry, through MPD, and then um, looking at what that, what that governance will be. My, my, my what has been misconstrued with, with me saying CVPSA would be, I think with the governance model like this, it's more essential that folks who are on the ground and doing this stuff from a day-to-day -day basis need to make the decisions. And uh, so when I mentioned CVPSA, uh, with, with all due respect, I was considering that since it's already a, 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 a recognized entity by, by voting law, would, would be a restructure that would put on the subject matter experts who are doing the job day to day um, to uh, to do any governance models that that may be required. But is from from my understanding of what's going on to include our working group um, and, and making recommendations to the governor and the legislation, we're, we're not looking to get into the weeds with a recommendation of what a governance model should look like. We're only just saying that it should just be unique to the needs of the community. At least this is my understanding of what the pulse is, but not recommend. So, so I'm confused when, when I hear things like the governance model is affecting the grant. That, that's the furthest thing from the truth. It's, it's, it's not that. It's just that more pe people are just more susceptible to leave that in local control. But if anything, would be just to make sure that whatever the governance model is, at a minimum, looks at this, this, and that. I don't think that we're going to recommend anything that's going to be specific. Chief. Okay, I, I just a minute, Kim. Uh, Brian, I just want to clarify. You used the term project working group. You were on the actual working group for the Department of Public Safety reviewing all these applications, right? No, not for that one. I'm part of the uh, part of the, uh, the the working group that's looking at what the recommendation. So, so when the legislature. Um, allotted that money to go towards yes. the communication infrastructure. They made up a working group, and this working group is spearheaded by Paul White. Um, Mandy uh, is on there. Several other people, members from small towns, members from the from Baycop, which is where where I am. So, okay, so and it's a legislative together. working group on this project. Correct, and that's okay. the group that I'm on. I saw it on the website, and I I wasn't sure if it was legislative quote appointed or DPS, department appointed. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Chief. Joe, hello. Joe, you asked Brian and Joe. Joe, you want to say something? Oh, yes, I want to hear from Joe. So I was part of the uh, working group that was appointed by uh, DPS and uh, Captain Burnham about formulating the, uh, um, the application for this. And one of the things that people have to understand is that there are a lot of people that were affected that had no plans at all in place, that they had no forms of governance structures at all. And that that statement was made so that people were forced to look at it and to identify which way they were going to go, either by a board oversight or by contractual. And so that's why that was stated in there so that that was not missed. And so I think people are looking at it, and I believe the commissioner actually went on record saying that the contractual end of the governance is a legitimate governance scheme. Yeah. And so that's why when we, when I, when I was talking with uh, Televate, Rick and Dom and, and, and Chief Pete, that's why we chose to go with the existing contractual agreements that were already in place historically. And so I think that's what people are missing is that we have some history dating back all the way to Chief Hoyt with the existing uh, contracts that are in place. 
in both uh, Montpelier and Barry City. So I think it, to confuse what they're trying to guide the other services, mainly Rutland County, that really has been left in a lurch that had nothing uh, developed. And so when, just a little background on that, when they were coming to the table trying to figure out uh, what was going on, they were actually supplied with uh, the bylaws, the, the contracts and everything else from Montpelier to help them develop their own forms of governance. Yes. Thank you for thank you for clarifying that. Anything else, Joe, before I go to Doug? Okay, Doug, your hands up. You're muted. Oh, Tim was before me. Oh, I'm sorry. He's got a harder hand to see. All right, Kim. Well, I'm uh, sitting here kind of wondering, um, is uh, there Kim, anything? I'm sorry, Jim. I called on Kim. It's Kim, oh, Kim. Doug, and then you. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm Look, I've read the reaction to our grant it was conditionally approved and black letter statement is you have to meet the eligibility requirements and the eligibility requirements are not what you folks have been doing you need individual contracts with each town not some collective contract with uh you know with that's been going on in the past as far as I'm concerned, that idea was disapproved of, and that's why we didn't get the money. And <coughs> I've heard nobody backtracking from that. Um, I think you folks heard something prior to the RFPs being proposed, and I think something changed when the RFP came out, because those are the things that Homeland Security requires in every grant is a governance proposal uh, that has contractual relationships with with all the stakeholders, and we don't have that. And okay. that's why, as far as I'm concerned, we didn't get the money, and that we won't get the money unless we do it. Okay, uh, Doug, and then Jim, and then Brian. Chief Pete, uh, I guess I'd like to put you on the spot here and maybe even include uh, Chief Osworth. Have either of you received any word from the Department of Public Safety that your application has been rejected because of a lack of um, a governance? The answer to that one is no. That, that didn't happen. The only reason the money was quote unquote not allocated, it, it's not a matter of, of no, it's a matter of when. And, and we got that clarification from uh, the commissioner and it's basically, they're looking at a, a, at a strategic approach and how they're doing it. One of the things is what, what they did get from the joint fiscal committee was authorization to go out there and get a pro program manager, subject matter experts. And the subject we have a significant dollar amount we're requesting. So before they're going to give us almost $3 million, they want to make sure that what we propose to them will in fact actually work. And it's a lower dollar figure than somebody who, who they are well aware if somebody like, for example, Orange County is saying, we're going to take 19 people. We only need $150,000 to do it. Um, that doesn't pass the, pass the sniff test. So, and especially now that they have a new sheriff. So, so it's not, we weren't denied the grant. It's not a matter of specifically to quote her. It's not a matter of no it or if, it's a matter of when. And so they are taking a strategic approach at how they're implementing and divvying out the money. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Um, thank, you for, thank you for clarifying that. Anything else, Doug, the, before I go to Jim? Uh, Jim, Ward, do you still have a question? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of sitting here listening to this and, and was just wondering, uh, keeps question keeps coming back. Is there anything that this body could do tonight or at any time that could have any effect, positive or negative, 
on that grant. And I don't think there is. I think we're prognosticating about what the uh, decision makers might do, but we don't have any influence over, over changing that. So I'm not really sure why we're trying to guess what they might do. Yes, that's a very good point. Okay, Joe, yours is up and then Brian. So I think that that's, that that's a good point, Jim, that at this point in time, with the interpretation that we received directly from Commissioner Morrison, that at this point in time, there's nothing that this board can do. Uh, and we would certainly, uh, and, and I'm not gonna speak for the managers, but if we had something that the board needed to do to take action, we would definitely come forward. But at this point in time, I think with the uh, interpretation we got from Commissioner Morrison today, I think we just let it go, let, let it lie, let the consultant confirm what you guys paid good money for for Televate to say yes. One of the things I also have to urge you is that our the study that was paid for by CBPSA was second to none throughout all the applications. And so it was very comprehensive study that was supported by, by what we have. So just, you know, there are a lot of people in throughout the state playing catch up right now that we were so far ahead that now with some uh, outside influences, the legislatures are now saying, okay, listen, we wanna make sure that the system that's proposed is solvent, that is, has longevity, and that it will actually work as proposed. And so to be honest with you, I think that's great uh, oversight by the state to, 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 to spend that money wisely and, and make sure that each of the uh, proposals that come across their, their, uh, their process, it follows that level. So I'll, I'll defer to Chief Pete now. All right, Brian, you're on. Yes, ma'am. And, and and if I may, again, like piggyback off what Joe said, uh, just to give you an example, Mark Anderson in Wyndham County asked me to ask to see what we were submitting. And I sent it to him um, because we have been a lot of, again, with, with, with what Joe had put together and Dom and Rick had put together, it was being referred to as, well, you should reach, have you talked to what Central Vermont's doing? consecutively and 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 as far as um uh mr ward's question about what we can do as a body or what you can do as a body here um if anything what they're hearing from the board is entirely different than what we've put into the grant and that increased the level of scrutiny and in my mind excuse me Brian, i didn't hear from the board i'm sorry and the board has sent support letters. I sent one to the committee on Wednesday. The board has supported. Yeah, yes, ma'am. And I apologize about that. Yes, not the, but, but they're, they're, the interpretation that I'm understanding, if, and this is, this is my summary conclusion, is they're hearing entirely different things coming out of different voices within central Vermont. And, and that is causing more scrutiny to us, and if I think anything, that's what probably delayed any chance of us getting this and this money initially this fast, whereas other people did. So, so to me, when they're hearing um, the the board as a whole sending out a letter of support, and they're hearing Barry and Montpelier saying this, and then they see the the grant proposal we put in, and then they're getting emails or phone calls or conversations saying that we should not get the grant money they're probably going to want to wait. It makes the most sense to wait to see if a subject matter expert is going to say, yes, what they put in is going to do what they said it's going to do. Yes. I have a question. All right. Um, really, I mean, we've given the update on this. There isn't any, as Jim pointed out, there isn't anything else we can do at this point uh, on the application. I don't see any reason to belabor this. We're already past our uh, meeting time at 8.36. I have a simple question for Joe. Uh, okay, Kim, quick. Joe, you said you heard from Morrison today. Is that, have you got anything in writing about this? Yes, Chief Pete received an email from Commissioner Morrison. I'd like to see that, please. 
I will send it out to the board now. Okay, thank you. But I, I, I'd like to echo that it's very frustrating putting all the work into this and then turn around and and know that you know that Madam Chair is is in support and the you know the, the support we've gotten from the other members and then to find out that there are individuals that are in essence saying don't refund it, it's not worth it, and they in good faith uh, voted to to commission the study with Elevate and they paid good money to do that and they turn around and they torpedo the whole action. And like I said, it's very frustrating. I put a lot of hours into this. And to be honest with you, I, I think it's uh, very disjointed in that it really affects the reputation of uh, your board. And so I'm just gonna leave it at that. Look, if okay. that's aimed at me, it's absolutely yeah. oh. false. Okay. Uh, Brian, do you really have your hand up? And then Doug had your hand up. Oh, sorry about that, ma'am. I will lower it. Okay. So, uh, Doug, do you want to say one more thing? Oh, your I'm hand's muted. up, but you're muted. Yeah. It's hitting the right button. I know I'm muted. That's not... That was the thumbs up. <laughs> oh, oh, I messed... Oh, gotcha. <laughs> okay. It's obviously... My my mind has uh, not paid attention to the symbols there. Thank it's okay. you. Thumbs up All for right. Joe. So, thumbs up for Joe and Brian for their comments. Yes. I wanted to remind the board before we close tonight that Barry City Council has invited the Public Safety Authority Board to bring to come and talk about our budget, our plans and attend the December 13th meeting. It's a Tuesday, December 13th. Montpelier has invited us to come on December 14th, Wednesday. As I find out more where we're placed on the agenda, and I'll send you links if you wanna do it remote. And that the annual meeting is December 19th. Justin sat down and, and went through with me with a charter, getting all the dates arranged accordingly. And December 19th worked the best to be a, a bit out of the holidays, but also backed into all the other dates and all the other advertising we had to do. So the December 19th annual meeting on a Monday, will we'll, all these meetings will be remote. So mark your calendars. Now, if we're having that December 19th meeting, do you still wanna have the regular meeting on the the eighth. I would suggest that we do that if we're fooling around with our budget. Yeah. Okay, so we'll still go ahead and plan the meeting on the eighth. I'll send out yeah. an agenda. All right. Yes. If we only meet for five minutes, so we'll see each other. Merry Christmas and fine. Well, and, and likewise, we'll have a chance maybe to talk about our meetings with the two city councils. So that could be helpful. Yep. All right. The meeting is adjourned. I thank everyone for being here.